Some people always like, you know, the idea that someone should take care of them, but the problem is you're turning over health care to the government, <laughs> the people who run the post office. The health care legislation increases access to care, but it doesn't put in place the kinds of policies that would reduce costs. And that is as important because if you just increase access to care, it's unsustainable and you'll have to ration care. And then the government will have to ration care, which makes me uncomfortable. And I hope it makes you uncomfortable. Putting your trust in the government is kind of pushing your luck. I think the biggest potential is in reducing the cost of care so that we don't have to restrict access as much. And I see us as able to reduce the cost of care by reducing state regulations on uh, the way medical professionals are used and the way that healthcare is provided. If we can get out of hospitals and into other kinds of provider services like the retail clinics that you're seeing in Walmart, I think that is going to be a way to reduce the cost of healthcare but also to um, expand coverage. Healthcare is provided today the same way it was provided 40, 50 years ago. You go in, you see a doctor, they talk to you, you leave. But it's not necessarily the most efficient way to provide a service, but the regulations make it so that there's no other way to do it. Use of the internet and email, uh, you know, physicians have, have been really slow to adopt that because there's no reimbursement code for it. If a, if a patient sends you an email message, you don't get paid. You need them to show up and look at you and you need to talk to them, you know, face to face before you're going to get reimbursed. Kaiser Permanente in Hawaii put in an email system for their patients and they reduced office visits by 25%. If you need a checkup for your car, you would go to a Jiffy Lube on a Saturday or a Sunday and they, or after work and they would get you in and out in a little while. If you need a smog check, you go in now, there's these smog check places, you go in, you wait, and you're done. And we don't see that in healthcare and you have to ask why not. And many people don't get physicals. A lot, a, a, the majority of the population doesn't get a physical. And so if you could make it more accessible, you could maybe do more to improve healthcare than lengthy office visits with um, medical professionals, kind of like what FedEx did to the post office. Look how good that turned out, you know. FedEx started out by taking the stuff that the Postal Service wasn't doing very well, and soon the Postal Service had to compete and really re reinvent themselves so that they could do overnight delivery. But the hospitals have been much more effective than the Postal Service in, in restricting uh, competition in their markets. In, 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 and making it so that if you want to set up something that's different or that has a different structure that might be more cost effective, you can't. You know, a lot of people think that government regulation protects consumers, and so they say, well, we need more regulations instead of less. But I've spent the last uh, decade looking at state licensing, and I can tell you it's not protecting you. Once you say that a doctor has to be licensed, then the, the medical professionals get organized and they say, well, here's what you have to have to have a license because we want to restrict entry. Well, they don't say it that way, but that's the objective is to reduce competition so that they can earn more. Most physical therapists in the United States have a bachelor's degree. And so the idea that we should convert to a system where they all have a doctorate is just tremendously constraining and expensive. People have this idea in their head that more education is always better. And it kind of presumes that somehow because you did go to this particular program or the state did license you, that that means something. Just because you went to school and you passed some test, it doesn't mean you're competent now or it certainly may not mean you're competent in 30 years. State licensing does almost nothing uh, in terms of protecting you from physicians who might be negligent or engage in substandard care. Really, the only solution to bringing down the cost of health care is to make patients have to shop. Like, no one knows what things cost in health care in the United States. You don't know, your doctor doesn't know, and if nobody knows what things cost, you just buy things indiscriminately, and that's why health care is so expensive. If you had a health savings account, you'd be looking for a kind of jiffy lube place to do your physical. You know, you wouldn't say, oh, I need to go and see my doctor and spend 20 minutes with him, and you'd say, well, where can I go to get a physical on a Saturday where I don't have to pay tons and then you might do it more frequently and the cost of doing physicals would fall dramatically. And if we don't shop around, if we don't, if we're not active participants in this market, we're going to end up with a system that's very um, stodgy and with less innovation and more expensive than it needs to be. Mm -hmm.